Once upon a time, there lived a little giantess. The little giantess loved to grow her own vegetables. And every year, the little giantess would pop her seeds into lovely, warm, rich compost and watch in wonder as those little seeds popped out of the soil and grew into beautiful vegetables. Oh, this always made the little giantess very, very happy. But then one year, the naughty, bad compost ogres decided to play a trick on her and not give her any compost. <laughs> Hello everybody. How are you all doing? I'm continuing on my tinker day from the last video. I'm outside the shed because very soon, oh, look, leaning back, I'll have a bit of shade. And I did get really, really quite warm out there. So I've still got on my, can you see my head and neck cooler. Thank you so much, Lynn. If you didn't see that last video, this was a gift. There are two of them. A gift from Lynn in Australia. I simply put it into a pot of water for 20 minutes and there's kind of like gel or something inside that expanded and is holding the water. Just putting it there on my occiput is giving me a gorgeous cooling effect. So yes, quiet bit of pottering and potting before heading back into the garden. So, <laughs> compost gate. Well, it is now one week. Ah, oh, just to say, I'm just getting, finally getting the geraniums potted up because of compost. Uh, sorry, pelagoniums. Um, they're in plastic pots just because it helps retain a bit of moisture because they are such small pots, they'll dry out really quickly, but they are ugly, the plastic pots. So I always just slip them inside a nice bit of terracotta. They look very sad at the moment <laughs> because they are, they've been needing to be potted up for ages. Never mind, they're done now. So, oh my goodness, compost gate. So it was a week ago, those dreadful bags arrived and I haven't heard back from the company, so I am not having that mess cluttering up, not just my space, but it, it, the space belongs to two other people as well. It's not fair. So I started bagging it up into bin bags <laughs> that aren't split, and I started to bring it down to the garden. So I've got a little bit today to play with. So pelagoniums in, and then I've got these two wee little, aren't they gorgeous? These are peppermint seedlings. These were some spares that Kay had that she's kindly passed on. I'm not even gonna thin them. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just literally going to tip the whole lot out and put them in a pot. I don't have any large containers at the moment. I've got those two really big ones on the deck as my hugu cultures. Um, the thing about mint is you really really want to have it in a container because it will spread like mad you will end up having a garden of peppermint or any kind of mint and nothing else so i let them get going in these you know they're decent enough size they're probably about a litre in there i don't know um let them get going in here and then over the coming weeks i will look out for either in skips or on free cycle any of those places where people are getting rid of stuff, I will look out for something to plant them into that's bigger. And I think preferably what I'd like to find is something probably as deep as like an old Belfast or butler sink, some of you call them, either an old sink or for example, like the old metal, galvanized steel baby baths that we used to have as little well some of us had as babies but something a bit not too deep but wide-ish because then I was thinking it the perfect spot on the deck 
in front of the hugel cultures because as they grow it'll kind of disguise the nasty plastic of the hugel cultures uh, but remain contained yay so today i'll give these all a water in a second as well actually i need to find something to stand these pots in to act as drip trays to catch any water because we are back to watering yes scotchio um so today oh actually i'll that's reminding me to mention this um it's all about tomatoes and tomato cares because they have now been in the ground three weeks they've all greened up beautifully they're starting to bush up they're obviously finding their feet and getting down there fantastic so the priority job is put their big stakes in ideally i would have done it when i planted them so there's no danger of me damaging their roots however it wasn't possible at that time never mind i'll pop them in today so bigger stakes get them tied into their stakes pinch out the side shoots and then give them their first aspirin spray of the year i've talked about all of this as we do it i'm just mentioning now because this is um water from our dip tank it's mains water so it comes up really cold and the last thing i want to do on a really hot day like today is spray really cold water onto my tomatoes i think it's just too much of a shock i wouldn't like it well actually i would <laughs> oh, come on spray there we go mm. there's nothing in this apart from water at the moment oh yeah that's really nice um so i've, I've filled it with water already i'm just going to leave it out here in the sun it will soon warm up in there and basically get it to this sort of similar temperature as we've got in the air so it's not a shock and then i'll add my aspirin but like i say i'll explain that as we go for now it's time to start getting the stakes in You're a tiddler. You can have a stick. Okay, never mind. Gosh, it's so warm. Right, find another 8, 16, 24 sticks. Hooey. When it's really, really hot, 
it's a good idea to find somewhere <laughs> cool and shady. <laughs> oh, sorry little man, I didn't mean to wake you. Oh, you did look funny. Your bottom half was doing something totally different to your top half. Yeah. Back to sleep, buddy. Sweet dreams. <sighs> oh, that breeze. Oh, it's beautiful. Tomato first aid kit. So, I've got all my steaks in. I'm just going to show you on this one plant what I do for all of them and what I will continue to do throughout the summer. And all of this is about A, <laughs> trying to get the best crop by putting the all the plant's energy into its fruit trusses and B, trying to delay blight. So everything I do in terms of trying to delay the blight, there's, there's pretty much nothing I can do organically to stop blight, but I can delay it. I was a bit off the ball last year but in previous years when I've been on the ball with my tomatoes, I've found that I do get blight, but I tend to get it about four weeks after most other people on site. And those four weeks are precious because in those four weeks, I, all the green fruit, all those little tiny developing fruits, they've got a chance to grow and ripen. So it's worth doing. Okay. So they've all got bigger stakes in now. Uh, so I'm going to start tying. And I will literally do this, you know, every, well, depending on how quickly they grow, every few days to, you know, probably at least once a week. Basically at about every sort of eight or ten inches or so. And as with all the tying I do in the garden, I'm anchoring my string to the support, not the plant, and then just loosely around the plant. Today, all the jobs are going to be a little bit fiddly and time consuming, just because it's my first go at them all this year. So they've already grown and gone a bit mad because I haven't been looking out for them. But then as the season goes on, slightly less tinkering, just more about tying in and nipping out the side shoots. Right now, side shoots. Stem. Leaf. <laughs> and then just in the crook here, a little side shoot springing. Springing forth. So they're all the ones that I want to just pinch out. I'll show you when I've got them out. Is it a leaf or is it a side sheet? There's a side sheet. So, all these little side sheets. Now, if I left them, uh, you know, they would still grow and some of them might produce uh, some fruits. It would go rampant and bonkers. It would be really hard to keep good air circulation. I'll talk about air circulation properly in a minute. That's a blight prevention thing. So you don't have to do this. However, like I said, I want all the energy to be going up. I want this plant to climb and climb and climb. And as it's climbing, it will start to throw out little trusses. In fact, here's the first one at the back. Little trusses for the fruits to develop on. So the first job is, all my side shoots are off. Great. I could probably do with tying this one again because it did get going quite well. Then the other thing I like to do, I'm removing a lot of my bottom leafage. <laughs> Let's have you off. Let's have you off. 
Okay, that will do for now. I've still got one, two leaves below this first little flower truss that's developing on the back, so you can't see it, can you? I'm removing the leaves from the bottom for two reasons. One, again, it's that thing of I don't want the plant putting energy into them, but also it's back to this hygiene for my anti-blight kind of campaign for the year. Blight thrives in warm, moist environments. So, firstly, the less leaves I have, the less area there is for moisture to sit on, i.e. rain. Um, the, with all these bottom ones, they're, they're sort of useless to me anyway, like I was saying, for the growing. But also, a lot of the time we're having to water at the moment, yes. <laughs> like I said, we're back to watering. What I don't want is water splashing up from the soil as I'm pouring it on, splashing back up onto those leaves and wetting those leaves, and then those leaves sit there wet and warm. Like I say, it's a perfect, perfect environment for blight. Not having it. I'm leaving enough leaves on the plant for it to photosynthesize, <laughs> do its growing. Later on, oh, I've just noticed that's a second little flower truss coming, yay later on by the time they're sort of three four feet tall i'll have had all the lower leaves off but then i will also start to with these leaves that are remaining i'll start to actually cut them all in half again it's all about making sure that air can move around the plant you want the air moving through <coughs> excuse me to dry them after rain or splashing from water whatever it is but yeah let's get loads and loads of ooh, lovely air movement going around each plant fab so i'll do that with all of these little babies today stake tie remove the majority of the leaves below the first truss of flowers remove all the side shoots jobs are good in then we come to the aspirin spray so i've got my water which i set aside oh it's probably about an hour ago now it kind of feels like blood temperature, as in I can't feel a temperature of either warm or cold, so it's my temperature, which is quite hot, isn't it? Oh my goodness, today, you know, just to take a second, um, I'm using my imagination a little bit, but I'm sort of pretending to myself, feeling to myself that I'm in the south of France gardening today beautiful I'm sort of imagining I'm up in the hills just behind Nice doing my garden and when I finished I got on my bicycle free wheel down the hills all the way to the beach strip run into the sea and bathe oh just what a heavenly thought unfortunately there is no sea near me here <laughs> not only is there no sea there's no water unfortunately there is a small stream river about half a mile away do I want to bother walking all that way and taking my shoes and socks off for a paddle I might do anyway back to today and this tomato cares so like I say I didn't want it to be straight from the mains because it will be freezing cold well not freezing cold but really jolly cold so I've got my water oh there's probably about 300 200 mils in here and then I've got my soluble aspirin. Now, which, have I opened a packet? Now? I don't need a whole one for this small amount of water, so half a one will do. Pop that in. These are specifically soluble ones, so it's going to dissolve in the water. <clears throat> so the idea behind the aspirin. Um, I read about this, oh gosh, 10 years ago, maybe. It seemed a bit wackadoodle, if I'm honest, but I thought, well, I'll give it a try. I'm always happy to give things a try. And like I said, that very first year that I tried it, I seemed to get blight much later on than everyone else on site. So maybe this was part of the answer. So as I understand it, the the spraying of the aspirin it gives the plant a bit of a shock um 
much as if we were to get a bee sting, for instance, our body mounts this immune response. I won't go into the details. <laughs> I will if you want, one day, um, as an ex-immunology nurse. But we, we mount this immune response. We will experience a bit of pain at the site. We'll experience a bit of inflammation, heat, redness, what have you. But that's our body's way of dealing with that momentary invasion, that momentary shock of the sting. Uh, we're perfectly capable of doing that. Some people, of course, unfortunately, will develop an allergy. So the next time they get stung, they'll have an allergic reaction. Uh, if you're one of those people, you probably carry your EpiPen with you at all times. I certainly hope so. So it's thought that doing this aspirin has a similar effect on the tomatoes. That it will sustain this sort of momentary shock and mount a defence against it. I'm, I'm, I've sat on an ant again. The ants this year are really naughty. In fact, you know, I'm hearing from so many people that the pests this year in terms of ants, horrid, black fly, everyone's really struggling with black fly and on things where we don't normally get too much of an issue with it, like our beans. But yeah, I've sat on an ant and it's had a chew of me bum cheek. <laughs> Never mind. Right, back to the tomatoes. My bum is now mounting a defence against that sting. Yeah, so it's thought that it has an almost hormonal type response to this shock. Sorry, I'm giving you a shock, little plant. But in giving it that shock, it's going to mount its defence and make itself stronger. Look, you know, like I said, I read it years and years ago, tried it. It seems to work. I can't remember the exact science now. I'd have to go and find that research paper all over again. I did have it bookmarked once, once upon a time, but my computer has crashed and broken so many times since then, I no longer have it. But when I initially read that, the science made sense to me and the practice over the last few years has certainly seemed to bear it out. So good luck, little Toms. That's one down, 31 to go here, three up in the cathedral bird. Like I said, it's, it's going to be a fiddly one today because I'm playing catch up with all my side trusses and etc, etc. They will look considerably more naked and bare afterwards, but hopefully considerably more ready and able to produce beautiful harvests for me and to ward off the horrid naughty blight. As I say, it's not, it's not going to prevent blight, <clears throat> all these things I do. It, it, it's almost inevitable with outdoor tomatoes that we get blight. I've only had one year where I didn't get any blight at all, which was 2018. And it was the year we were in drought all summer. So because we were in drought, because we were so dry, no blight. Most of us were harvesting tomatoes right through to the end of October, which is unheard of here. Normally, let's see, I have one more of those, I think. Oh, another little flower truss. Normally, we would, we would think we're lucky if we can keep our tomatoes going into the middle of September. So it's really astonishing. Ah, just one final thing to say as well, all these little side shoots, you can pot them on, grab another plant from them. So pot them in a jar of water, much as I do with my pelagonium cuttings, or you know, pop it straight into some compost. It should root for you and produce a whole other lovely plant. I won't be doing that because A, I have no room for any more tomatoes this year, and because basically, oh, you have to look really carefully. There's always a second or third or fourth one missed. And also, literally all of my neighbours now, everyone's got more tomatoes than they can possibly want. We've all been sharing like mad. So 
there's no point in me doing that because there's no one to give them to <laughs> and there's no space in my garden to plant them. So, right, I'd better shut up and get on with it all, hadn't I? <laughs> I'm a bit hot. <laughs> You know, despite the fact that it's been a really gentle day, started this morning, lunchtime, with all the flowers and herbs and bits and pieces, and then this afternoon carrying on with tomatoes and a few other odds and ends. Um, it's been a long day, and I feel absolutely whacked. <laughs> I think that's probably a bit to do with the heat, uh, but also I think to be honest with you, I think it's the last sort of six, eight weeks or so catching up with me. Yeah, undoubtedly. So um, I think over the next few days, I'll probably be only coming here to water in the evenings. The rest of the time I need to get back on the sewing machine. I have outstanding makes to make. It'll make a nice change, won't it? Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to have to be here to water every night. Talking of water, let me have a glob. So, how much does this hold? 1.5 litres. It's my second one, nearly done. So it's nearly three litres of water over about six, seven hours today. But despite that, I've hardly had a pee. <laughs> I've done about that much pee, which is so frustrating because all those climbing beans I put in the other day and all the cocoa de pan pole that I plugged gaps with, the ones that had been uh, sewn in the little cells, they all look really yellow and pathetic. Um, they'd obviously used up all the nutrients in the compost. Then we had that really heavy rain which washed any last nutrients out of the compost which is why I then you know got in a hurry to get them planted so they could really really do with a bit of a fertilize from my wee. Um, I've managed to do one row of the climbing beans the Gigantis last night with a bucket of wee but yeah I'm really struggling to make any and you know it started oh this, I kind of made myself laugh this morning when I got out of bed and had my first wee of the day on the loo, I was thinking, oh, you've put it in the loo, what a waste, you need it for the beans. I'm not, oh, I was going to say, I'm not sure that I really want to be carting my wee from home to the allotment. But on the other hand, you know what, why not? I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just wee. I'll have to get another of my special slimline watering cans to keep at home. Imagine I get stopped by the police. Can you show us what's in your bag, missus? <laughs> Bottles of urine. Anyway, yes. Uh, wow, a hot day. Beautiful. I do love it. Um, every time I kind of go, oh, it's so hot, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating the blimmin' obvious. yeah I am looking forward to a week of maybe not doing any gardening other than in the evening to come and water enjoy that community thing when because everyone's going to be here every night watering maybe I'll see a couple of little pieces I think oh I'll do that tie a cucumber in tie a climbing squash in they're not really doing anything yet um they're not they're not shrinking <laughs> they're not dying they're just a bit like they want some rain they really really want some rain they all do the whole garden does last week that one sort of 24 hour period of rain the garden looked amazing afterwards and now it's all starting to go hmm, a little bit crispy again never mind we'll just keep on top of the watering okay my lovelies you can probably tell i'm fit for bed I dare not lean back in here because honestly I think I'd be asleep in here all night they'd find me tomorrow morning I would love love to spend the night here I close my doors I could have my little side window open get a nice breeze and just fall asleep to the sound of the birds and whatever else lives here at night 
unfortunately we're not allowed to stay overnight oh i love that love it it's not to be all right my gorgeousities it's time for me to go and water guard myself for that boring boring task you know the thing is it is a really boring task and it hurts like heck to do it logging for an hour but it's always it's literally every day it's an opportunity to really look at the plants and see how they're doing and you know what pretty much every day there's something new to see there's some new little sign of a bit of growth here or a little flower developing there so yeah it is tedious but let's try and take the tedium out of it by going on a hunt for gorgeousness as we do it so on that note cheerio to you all please look after yourselves if it's hot 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 where you are get yourself a little one of these can you hear it even <laughs> it's not my brain although my brain does feel a bit melty yes please look after yourselves if it's this hot I suppose ideally don't be out in it when it is this hot come out in the evening or the early morning but if you do have to be in it hat sunnies water squidgy neck thing or head thing and just enjoy the fact that summer is properly here i will see you all again really soon but until then take care of yourselves and bye for now